Hello, sports card investors, collectors, and hobbyists from around the globe. You got a little extra hello tonight because tonight is particularly exciting. Welcome to what might be the most exciting night of the Virtual Sports Card Con 2020 because tonight is eBay night. And eBay has done an absolutely wonderful job of partnering with us for the Virtual Sports Card Con 2020. And you are going to love what eBay has brought to the table this evening. So first of all, tonight, we are going to start with an exclusive interview with Pat Nishik, the MLB pitcher turned baseball card collector and enthusiast. We're going to have a wonderful conversation with Pat. He's going to be joining us here on the show. We also have from eBay, Nicole Colombo, the general manager who oversees eBay's trading card business. We're going to talk to her about all things trading cards at eBay. We also have Tim Getch from ComC, who's going to be joining the show. ComC, obviously a massive online retailer and a big partner of eBay's. Uh, a lot of ComC's listings are now sold on eBay through special integrations that they are doing with eBay. And we also have Layden Sports Cards, one of the best breakers in the sports card breaking business. And Layden Sports Cards, thanks to eBay, is going to be breaking some absolutely amazing boxes tonight that you have an opportunity to win. And folks, let me tell you, let me tell you what our giveaways are this evening because this is, this is ridiculous. We are giving away tonight over the course of this show as well as a special eBay sponsored happy hour, which is going to take place on eBay's Instagram. After this show is over, we are going to be giving away two boxes of National Treasures Basketball 2019-2020, a Zion might be pulled tonight. We're going to be breaking one of those boxes live on the virtual, and then we're going to be giving an unopened box away on eBay's happy hour on eBay's Instagram after we wrap up with the virtual tonight. Absolutely incredible, but that's not all. We're also giving away diamond icons, baseball, a break of that. We're giving away a break of impeccable basketball from this year. We're giving away a break of Spectra basketball this year, and we're giving away other amazing prizes. Tonight is going to be a night like no other. We are creating what may be the biggest online event in the history of the hobby, thanks to eBay, and you are part of it this evening. Now, it's very important that you go right now to go register for these giveaways. And there's two ways you can do that. First of all, Tyler Holsammer from my team is putting a link right now in the YouTube chat that you can click, click that takes you straight to the giveaway. The other way you can do it is by going to sportscardinvestor.com and clicking the virtual 2020 in the main menu bar. And when you are on that page, there is a link right there that says click here to enter Friday's giveaway. You can do it either way. Again, go to sportscardinvestor.com, click on the virtual 2020, and click on the link to enter Friday's giveaway or click the link in the YouTube chat to the giveaway that Tyler Holshammer just posted. Go get yourself registered because we're going to start pulling our first winners out of the registrant pool not too long into this broadcast. We've got an amazing night planned for you. I've mentioned some of the guests. I've mentioned some of the giveaways. What I haven't mentioned yet are the dealers. And we've got two great dealers who are going to be coming on tonight. We have D's Cards, Daniel Cochran from D's Cards. Amazing dude. We're going to be talking about him later and his cards for sale. And we are also going to be bringing Incredible Collectibles. Juan from Incredible Collectibles on the show. These are great dealers. And by the way, big eBay dealers. And, and I'm pleased to announce that all of the sales tonight are going to take place through eBay a very big stable platform. It's going to be a little bit more stable than what we've experienced the last two nights when we were sending you to chat rooms and when we were sending you to dealers web pages and they could not handle the massive amount of traffic that you brought to them. And I appreciate all the traffic and all the enthusiasm, but thankfully we're going to nail that tonight with eBay on our side. 
All right, guys, let's go ahead and get started. I'm super excited to bring in our first guest tonight, Pat Nishik. Pat Nishik, as many of you know, is a MLB pitcher. This guy has is a two times All Star. He's pitched for the Twins, the Padres, the A's, the Cardinals, the Astros, the Rockies, the Phillies. He's got an amazing kind of sidearm, underhand delivery. Uh, it's led him to absolutely dominate right-hand pitchers. But in addition to having this long, illustrious baseball card, uh, baseball career, throughout it. He's been a baseball card collector and an autograph seeker, and he has been talking to players on other teams who he's been playing to get autographs while he's playing them. It's an amazing story. Let's hear it direct from Pat. Let's go ahead and welcome Pat Nishik to the Virtual Sports Card Con 2020, courtesy of eBay. I describe myself as eccentric. I'm pretty unconventional with a lot of things I do. I'm Pat Nishak, major league pitcher and baseball card collector. I have about 50,000 autograph cards, give or take. I'd say 95% of my collection was acquired off of eBay. To me, the fun of collecting is like the journey. It's the story behind it. I was a kid that would always come home with grass stains. We just always played sports. After games, my dad would take us to the card shop. We'd go get some ice cream and get a pack of cards. The 1985 Topps Kirby Puckett card was the coolest card when I was growing up. At the card shop, it was always behind the glass case. Anytime I see that card, it brings up memories of growing up. Fast forward, I'm in college. Pat Nishik will come on to pitch. My roommate is a big eBay seller. He's like, you want to go to Ohio State? I'm going to get some autographs after. We met like the whole team. I was like, this is pretty awesome. So that's kind of how I got into signed cards. First pitch from Nishik. Really been impressed with Nishik. Kid can play. Strike three. And then I got to the big leagues and you have access to get any guy you want. We just get stacks of these guys' cards signed. And I started building these really cool collections. I found myself back in 2006, I just had too much stuff. And then my elbow blew out. I had to have Tommy John surgery. I had a lot of time to just sit there and think. I sat there and I said, I like collecting, but it would be a lot of fun to just really focus on one thing. I really want to go after something. I want to go after something hard. I thought the 1970 top set was underappreciated. And I started following prices, tracking on eBay, past sales. And I saw that they weren't going for much. I'm going to go after this set. I rely a lot on eBay. And I think I had half the set done by about 2012. You would have a search that came to your like email every morning. This is the new stuff that came up. And I was on that. I'm still on it today. I bought the 1970 Topps Thurman Munson and the 1970 Topps Reggie Jackson All-Star card that was PSA 10. A 10 is a gem mint. It's flawless. The All-Star card very seldom come out in a PSA 10. This one came online. I was shocked. I didn't think it was real at first. I was like, this is... This is a Reggie Jackson. This is amazing. <laughs> I was dancing after that auction. <laughs> you know, I think eBay really is the new modern baseball card shop. You would have to almost go to like a thousand card shops all around the country to find this one thing. But instead eBay gets all those people together. It opens up their marketplace. You can make some good connections on eBay. I never really look at finishing a set. I'm just like, this is gonna be a fun journey. You know, maybe when I'm 80, I might get this last card, but you know, I'm gonna remember every damn card that's in this set. Pat, 
Scott, welcome to Sports Card Investor and the Virtual Sports Card Con. Yeah, awesome. Thanks for having me, guys. Yeah, it's an honor to have you on the show. It's a lot of fun. You, you've had quite the baseball career. I know a, a long career, a lot of different teams, a lot of different experiences, a, a unorthodox style of pitching, which really served well for you. Um, I know it's hard to sum up in one question, but what might be your favorite single memory from all of the years you were in the MLB? Oh, man, that's, you know, you got the like the debut where you like, it's kind of like a real realization of a dream. That's, that's got to be right up there. Um, the World Baseball Classic was pretty, pretty awesome. And then uh, the, the All-Star Games, I mean, that's just like the top of the world. Um, also playing on a lot of playoff teams. I mean, it's really hard to, you know, you kind of go on a journey where, you know, you start, you get drafted and you're like, hey, am I even worthy of playing rookie ball right now? You know, you get to A ball, am I even worthy to be here? And, and you kind of just take it day by day and, and see what it becomes. And, and it's just been so, so cool to, you know, to, to make it up to the big leagues and then to get that honor to be an all-star. So, Yeah, and uh, you got you to do that twice, all uh, right? Yeah. Uh, 2014 and 2017, I think. Yeah, yeah. It, it was cool way back in the day in 2007. Um, you know, I think I would have made it back then if they would have the same amount of uh, positions. They added a lot since then, and I think they took them away last year finally. But in 07, they had this vote for uh, the final five, and I, I was on there. I lost out to uh, had, had Okajima on the, the Red Sox, and uh, I think I got second or third, but that was a really fun campaign. And then, you know, I had Tommy John, and and, and you think it's all done, and, and to come back and, and make them then was, was, pretty, uh, was pretty awesome. Yeah, not only come back, but then you played almost, I think, another 10 years after Tommy John, which is, which is, you don't actually don't see that that often anymore. Yeah, you know, once with baseball, a lot of times when you get to 30 years old, you're, you're old in the game, they write you off. Um, I knew it, like, I, I knew I, like, when I broke in, it, it was really fun. It, I wouldn't say easy, but I, I did really well in 06 and 07. And I knew with my arm angle, if I could get that velocity back to 90 miles an hour, um, I knew I, I, I knew I what I had, and I knew it would be tough to hit. So it was kind of more like staying with it. It's really hard when you're in AAA and and you know you're eating the peanut butter jelly sandwiches, riding a bus, um, to really keep that dream alive. But um, yeah, it, it's just been one heck of a journey. And in addition to having that awesome baseball career that would span across a whole bunch of teams. I also understand you're a really big card collector, and I wanted to thank eBay for uh, you know bringing us together today um, about that journey. But tell me a little bit more about your baseball card collecting and how that came about. Yeah, it, it's really cool to partner up with eBay. Um, you know, they came to me right right around the pandemic, and and that's kind of when you know sports card. If you you know checked eBay auctions or sales sales prices back then everything just doubled and tripled here in the last, you know, with everybody being home, they're cleaning out their closets and, and that went wild. So it was really cool to partner with eBay. That's one of those, you know, I get asked for interviews a pretty good amount of time. And, and this one, I was like, we got to do this. This is, this is something I've been doing for, you know, since my college days was selling on eBay. That's, that's how I, you know, got pizza for, you know, free for, for my freshman and sophomore years in college. So, um, so but you yeah, were, you were flipping, you were flipping baseball cards back in. Well, in, well, in college, you know, that was so income? like, yeah. So, so back then one of my buddies, my roommate actually, um, he sold a lot of like college autographs. Like he'd go to Ohio state to get the basketball team. He'd go try to find Duke. And this was before a lot of, um, a lot of people got in on, on, on that market. So he invited me one week and, and I'm from Minnesota. So we got the twins, we got the big sports teams, but we don't have the minor league. We don't really have, you know, we have the gophers, but it's really hard to get autographs up there. So he invited me and, and here we're at a team hotel and man, we're knocking out the whole team. I'm like, this is kind of funny. I'm like, what are you doing next week? And so he invited me back and, and eventually it led to, I went to school in Butler in Indianapolis and they had a triple A team, the Indians. And so I would buy card sets of just minors, team best off eBay, and we would go and, and get them. And then you'd look on eBay for the team that was coming in next. And, and here were, you know, I think I had like one time 50 Alfonso Soriano cards signed by him after a game. I, I didn't really know much. I mean, it was kind of rude to hand him 50 cards, but he did them all. And I was kind of hooked back then to, to just keep getting guys. And, and so that's kind of that's kind of how I got back into like – with eBay and how I got into back into card collecting, and I was really big. I, you know, any kid in the '80s was 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 pretty big. You know, with Garbage Pail 
kid cards and then the baseball stuff blew up in 86, 87, 88. Um, but, but I kind of lost touch with it in 93, 94 as you go through junior high and high school. So it was really cool to find another person that kind of, you know, knew the card market back then, knew autographs and got me back in. And then, it, it, you know, after that, I was, I was hooked on. Yeah, that's awesome. That's a really cool story. Now, during your MLB career, you were, I understand that you sometimes would bring some cards, maybe have some other players autograph them. How did this kind of weave into when you were actually playing in the majors? Yeah, so so back in the day, I think it was 2003, um, I started like a blog and it was kind of like me following me in like A-ball, like what I did that day. Um, it was kind of skewed towards collectors though, where um, – you would write about like what autograph people you saw after the game, how many cards I signed. And I kept that going in, in 04, 05. And then I got up to the big leagues. Um, so that was, that was really cool to be able to have that interaction with the fans. I could trade stuff. Um, I got up, I started getting, I'd send over for like guys I thought would be in the hall of fame. Uh, but I just basically did baseballs. And in 2008, I ended up tearing my elbow. And so I had to get Tommy John and I sat around and I looked at my collection. I said, I have so much this weird stuff in this collection. And, you know, I'd get on eBay. I would sell some of the stuff that didn't make sense. I would keep a lot of the stuff. And I said to myself, I want to I wanna build something that's really cool. And one of the things I came up was I, I really was kind of mad at myself that I didn't really take advantage of being a big leaguer. And um, I kind of just felt, you know, I missed, I missed out that I could have got a lot more autographs. So I said, if I ever make it back, I want to send over some tops card sets and try to get these sets done. That was kind of a passion where um, you would build, you would start something not knowing, you know, it was kind of a journey. You, you didn't think you were going to finish it, but it, it was cool to know um, how each card, how each guy's sign-in habits were. Um, but I had really good access. So I was able to send over with the clubbies to, you know, pretty much everybody on the team. And I was, I think today I'm, I'm the only like, five, 10 cards short on like the 13, 14, 15 top sets. So um, getting everybody yeah. to autograph them. Yeah. Yeah. For and the most part, those, everybody those sets of hundreds, the sets of hundreds and hundreds of cards. So you yeah. literally have an yeah. autographed card of almost every single card those years. Wow. Yeah. They're really, they're really, some of them, you know, have like five guys on them and it's like, how, how would, how would somebody be able to get that finished? So I think that alone, it, it's a pretty rare set. I mean, I, I know a lot of guys that did sets like in the eighties were able to finish them. Um, guys were you know back then were a lot cooler about sign in and and they had better access but it's really hard i, I think those are going to be some of the rare um sets as you go down the road but i also relied you know you would find some guys that i the toughest ones for me were finding guys that were like rookies that got released they would go back to dominican republic they'd go back to venezuela so i would have to rely on on ebay or or, or talking with people on instagram to, to try to find these and piece these together so that that was kind of the fun of it all that's awesome. That's really, really cool. I hope, I hope you get one of those sets to 100% because I'm sure that will be an absolute one of kind. You'll be the only person with it in the world, and that, that's certainly special, something special to hold on to. Oh, yeah. It, it's, 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 I think I'm going to get them all graded by Beckett when, I, when, when that gets done. So. There you go. <laughs> there you go. Is there, so is there a um, – what's your favorite autograph you've gotten? Which one were you most excited about actually getting? There are some, there are some really cool ones. Um, oh, man, I mean – some of the some of my favorites were there was a, there was a card um Aroldis Vizcaino it wasn't him on the card it was a 2015 tops um it was some guy i think his name was Joanner Negrin and he was there as like a they signed him as like a minor league contract and they invited him over to the big league camp that day and he pitched in the game and somehow this pitcher got on Vizcaino's card and Vizcaino wouldn't sign it. He said, I'll sign the back, but I won't sign the front. So I got the, I was able to get, you know, him to sign the back. Then one of my, I had a, a buddy on, on Instagram. He was able to track, he said this guy was playing in Mexico. And so I sent him the card and sure enough, he got him to sign it. And I mean, just stuff like that. It's like that card's complete wow. now. So you got that card signed by the guy in the photo plus the guy yeah. who is on the actual card. That's amazing. Yeah, That's yeah. Awesome. Yeah, another one that was really cool. Um, there was a 1970 tops card with Herman Hill and he, he tragically passed away in 1970 drowned in, in Venezuela. There's another guy in the card, Paul Ratliff. Well, anyways, I was able, I searched eBay for years and, and somehow this card came up. It passed Beckett. Um, it was real. Herman Hill signed this card. And, and that alone is like, I, I think they said people have only seen like two or three of these that, that have been authentically signed by Herman Hill. So the other guy, Paul Radcliffe, he never, he hasn't had any successes on sport, sport collector net or anything. 
So one of my buddies, Steve Grad, he's the head authenticator at Beckett, said, hey, what's, I know where this guy lives. Let's go to his house, knock on his door, and see if he'll sign your card so you can finish it. Uh, we went out to, to, to Mr. Radcliffe's house. He answered the door. He was very accommodating. He let us in. He, he basically talked about how he, he just didn't like the state of baseball. That's kind of why, you know, it brings back bad memories. That's why he didn't want to sign. But he, he, he let us in his house for an hour. We talked. He signed the card. And, and it was really cool to just connect with an old ball player and finish that card. So those are a couple of my really cool cards, cards that I like. <laughs> those are awesome that's an awesome awesome story love it absolutely love it so how about collecting your own cards do you did you yeah a collection of your own cards over the years yeah it's 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 you know i've i've it started you know boom i never really got a bowman card or tops a lot of those guys before they had the rookie card logo um they wouldn't make like they made a lot of minor league cards, but I somehow never got one. I was never a prospect. I must have never impressed anybody to get one. So when I finally got up, Tops put me down as a box topper in the 2006 Tops update set. So the only way I could get myself was a box topper, and there was 50 different box toppers. So you would pretty much have to break four and a half cases to even have a chance at one of your cards. Yeah, so that was that was my first card. I had to solely rely on eBay because that was. I mean, I'm not. I'd have to rely on friends going to hobby shops, but I found, I think I found eight of them off eBay of the 25. I know there's one more out there. The guy's kind of holding it hostage. He wants, I think he wanted $500 and a couple of jerseys. And I'm like, Hey man, like, you know, I'll, so he knows it's you. He knows that you. Yeah. You, you yeah. To buy it. <laughs> it's cool. Like the people you find, it's like, they're either, they're really cool. Like, Hey, this is awesome. I'll send it to you for free. No, I'll just take, you know, take my money. But a lot of them will like to like put it up for like $400 and see what you'll offer. So that it's, it's kind of the, the hunt is yeah. I'll always remember seeing those cards. I don't know if I'll get them. I do have a really large amount of my, my rare ones, the one ones. Um, it's just cool to collect. I, 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 you know, I, I always loved, collecting when I was five, six years old and, and to see myself on a card and, and have a rare version. It's fun to chase. That's awesome. Really, really cool. Uh, do you have, do you, do you have uh, uh, any, any family or good friends who collect with you on any of this? Uh, my dad used to do it, but it kind of just got a little insane where like we were fighting over cards and he's like, just do it, do it yourself. I'll give you every one of yours. And, and, and so I see him. It's, <laughs> so, it's, it's really, so your dad was buying your cards and then you were upset. Yeah. We were, were probably all bidding each ones. other. We weren't even talking. Nice. nice, yeah, nice. Yeah, it's one of those, but, um, no, it's more like I'll find people, um, I'll find people on eBay or like Instagram that'll be like, I player collect you, you know? And I'm like, well, I do too. So like, let's, let me get the good ones. And, you know, <laughs> so I kind of made a rule. I said, if it's like numbered less than 10, I'm not going to sign it. Cause maybe we can work out a trade down the road, but everything else I'll sign. And, and so pe people have been really good though. It's, it's been fun. <laughs> cool. Awesome, Pat. Thank you. Just a couple more questions. So first of all, yeah. I'd love to know who is the, who is the scariest hitter that you ever faced during your career? Oh man, um, left-handed. I wouldn't say he was the scariest, but he, the guy just destroyed me. Was Raul Banez? I think he had like two walk-offs on me. Um, oh man, it, I could never strike now, he, he out. He wasn't stealing. He wasn't stealing signs, was he? Like, we didn't uh, sure that I don't. Happens. I don't think so, man. He crushed me in Seattle, and then he crushed me like ten years later, and uh, when he was on the Yankees. Um, right-handed, I think the toughest was Adrian Belt, Belt, um, Beltran. Like he, yeah. he I always. You know, my thing was, like, I always wanted to strike people out. And I tried so hard. I think I faced the guy, like, 15 to 20 times. And he always found a way to make contact. He was just a very, a very like, I don't know what it was. I would always get two strikes on him, and he would fall down, swing in. But he would somehow get to two strikes and then just turn it on. And he, he was a tough for me. For me, right-handers were, were pretty – it was it's pretty easy for me to get out. So to have somebody challenge me like that was – it was fun, but I was I I always knew it was gonna be it was gonna be a tough one to, to get him out. Um, but yeah, yeah, those, you look those up, two guys, uh, right-handers batting average against you. It's absolutely incredible. The statistics pop off the page about how effective you were against right-handers. It's pretty remarkable. Yeah, yeah, it it was. It, you know, you don't know that until you know you go through the minors, and then I know in two thousand six I got up to the big leagues, and I you know, you would read some stuff from other, you know, I'd check out the newspaper and see what other teams said. And one day they did this article on me and they got quotes from Brandon Inge, who was on the Tigers at the time. And he was like, I just don't even know what to do. I just pick a zone where the ball might be. And I kind of try to time it. And, and, and for me to know that it just made me feel really good. And to, to, to better understand how I pitch, I would love to be up there to face myself and see what it does. Cause I don't really don't even know, but 
um, you kind of get the hint after a while what 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 spots on the plate work for you, what pitches work, and 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 that's something you just got to grow up and and learn. Very cool, very cool. Are there any young players, young pitchers, maybe uh, in baseball right now who you know particularly excite you that you think, okay, I really like what this guy's doing. Pitching wise, um, you know these guys are all throwing 100 miles an hour. It's it's I've never seen anything like that. Um, so that's definitely changed. The mentality of pitching, though, has changed a lot. A lot of guys are more into, like, the spin rates right now. Um, y- you almost want some of the guys to have more of a competitive, like, fire in them, more so than, like, what they're projecting with their, with their, their, their numbers and, and, and some of the stuff they do. Um, as far as hitters, I really like that, that Cabrian Hayes on the Pirates. I really like that guy a lot. Um, and of course, I mean, like Juan Soto, you know, if he could stay healthy, he's going to be, he's going to be a monster. Um, Acuna's he's done it forever for the last couple of years. Um, yeah, it, it, baseball, baseball's in a good spot if they can get out on the field and play. So, I mean, I, I think that's, you see it with the, with the, with the card market. I mean, you check eBay, some of the prices it's, it's, you're seeing stuff that's just, it's, it's, it's a, it's a pretty healthy market. It's the, it's the healthiest I've seen since the early nineties. So. And what's your impression of that? Do you think that's going to continue? Is it only up from here or do you think, you know, this is, this is just a, a little bit of a yeah, I, I, right now and things will cool down. I don't, I don't. I mean, I thought so like that first month, I want to say it was like late March to like April. I mean, you'd started seeing like the MJ documentary and, and I was kind of like, oh, this is kind of a fad with some of these, you know, tops on demand prices. I, I didn't think that was going to hold up. And, and sure enough, it has. Um, I think we just brought in a lot more collectors to the to the game. People are excited. I mean, on Instagram, on Twitter, um, if you mention something, you got a lot of people that are speculating on guys. They got, they got, you know, this is their investments. This is what they like to to project and 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 to see what's going to happen. Um, yeah, it, it. I don't. I don't really see it going away, honestly. I thought at first it yeah, was, yeah. but but yeah, it's 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 uh it's pretty cool to see. I mean, I've I've been pretty hard doing this um with the baseball cards for like 15, 20 years since I got back in and and it's the most excited I've seen little kids. I've seen older men that you know that and women that buy the 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 hobby boxes. Um so it, it's in a great state. I know from the players association um I think they said like the payment to t- from tops was about double this year. So it's, 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 it's really cool to see. I know back in the eighties, they said that guys would get paid more from the union than they would their salaries just because of the baseball card market. So wow. that's cool. <laughs> it's awesome. I'm so happy that the, that the industry is roaring like it is right now. And I, I agree with you, Pat. I think we've got many great years ahead of us. I, I think this is a, a awesome trend that is here to stay. And, you know, collecting has been such a big part of American culture and such a big part of baseball culture. And uh, it's great to see uh, how healthy the industry is right now, for sure. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it's pretty wild. I mean, and the cool thing too, is there's so many different avenues you can collect. You collect, you can do the graded cards, you can do the autograph, the patch cards, a set builder, you can be a player collector, the box breaks. I mean, it, it's kind of firing on all cylinders and um, I love seeing it. Yeah, it's very, very neat. Uh, this season is obviously going to be a season like any other for Major League Baseball. And they, and they just recently announced that the playoffs are going to be expanded to 16 games, which is something we've never seen before. I'm, I'm personally pretty excited to see what that looks like. What are your thoughts on this season and the new playoff format? And what are you looking forward to most? Um, I'm, I'm really happy that like, the players were able to work it out with the owners. Um, after that, I mean, there's so much talent in the game that just being there the last couple of years and seeing some of the new guys, um, yeah, it's 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 just as a fan, it's going to be fun to watch that. Um, I'm hoping everybody stays healthy. That you know, I, I hope that doesn't get shut down. But um, yeah, it's it's uh, I'm excited. <laughs> I'm excited, just like you. It, it's finally back. It is finally back. Awesome, awesome. I'll get out, I'll get you out of here on this. Uh, What's next for you? You've had this amazing pitching career. It spanned a couple of decades. You've been, you know, you, you, this awesome force for many, many years. Now, what's what's next for Pat? It's it's weird, you know. Um, I've been home. I had the hamstring surgery last year, and then the virus. So it was kind of like, you know, I could come back here. I, you know, I, I've kept it open. Um, but I, I've just really enjoyed being with my family. Um, the biggest part is, you know, I've been 
cleaning out my closets here and, and listing stuff on eBay, selling stuff, buying stuff. I'm excited. I get to finally go to a national probably here if, if they're going to do it here in December. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. It's, it's for me, it's, it's, it's something I've never had here in, in 20 years to be home for a summer. So I, I'm really enjoying it. Um, my collection's about as good as it's been. <laughs> it's all in order. I'm finally able to take pictures and, and, and do stuff with eBay. It was really cool to do this commercial and have them come in and film a lot of my cards, show off, you know, how I, how I store stuff and, and just talk about my collecting habits. So I'm really excited. That's awesome. And Pat, I'm going to send you a free subscription to my Market Movers data platform so you can put your card collection in there and awesome. see the prices. It, it will yeah. track all the eBay prices for you so you can see how your card collection changes in value every single morning oh, yeah. uh, just by logging into the software. Which yeah, I, 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 well. I love I love like the new developments with this stuff where, where you could use it as an investment. Um, yeah, that that that's that's to me that's a lot of it. You know, you get these cards. A lot of it is investments. Um, for the most part, I think you got half the base that's doing it like that. So it's it's really cool to to be able to see you know especially with the graded cards too the supply and demand and and see all that all works and and, and I love it. Awesome, Pat. Thank you so much for joining the virtual sports card con and. Sports card investor, and, and good luck on your future. We're all excited to see what's ahead. Awesome. Thanks for having me. Wasn't that an awesome interview with Pat Nishik? And folks, there's, it's about to get more exciting. So I, I filmed that interview with Pat prior to the show. However, Pat is about to join us live on the show right now because Pat is going to do our first break of the night. Our first break of the night, our first giveaway of the night is a box of Diamond Icons Baseball. This is an incredible box given to us by eBay, and eBay has given us that honor of being able to open the box. We're gonna give away every single card that is about to be opened out of this Diamond Icons box, and we are going to do the break right now with Pat live. And then after the break, we're going to randomize who got what team. So we're pulling 30 people out who entered uh, the contest this evening. And uh, we're assigning those 30 people to random teams. And uh, we're going to announce that uh, who got it. So pay attention to the break. Look at what's going on. And you're going to see if you're one of the 30 people to win one of these teams right after the break. If you have not entered yet, there's still time. Go to sportscardinvestor.com and click on Virtual 2020 in the main menu. And from there, there's a link to enter the contest. But here we go. Let's go ahead and bring Pat Nishik on. Pat, welcome back to Sports Card Investor. Yeah, thanks, Jeff. This we got a good one tonight. We got we got the 2020 Topps Diamond Icons. That's I awesome. Mean, yeah, there's some and, good stuff. So let's uh, let's crack this open. Let's crack it open. <laughs> and you and you took your virtual background down. We now actually see what was behind you. The inter <laughs> the interview was hidden by the virtual background. Yeah, Is that yeah. are those some of your playing jerseys? Those are yeah. That's the A's, the Rockies. Got some of the baseballs I got in the back. But yeah, it was hard. I was. I was trying to show my hands and it was like my hands were disappearing in the background so <laughs> that's pretty sweet man congratulations yeah. what, what a wonderful baseball career you had thanks man thanks yeah let's awesome. get to this here i'm gonna start ripping this open here this is a good box man i hope somebody somebody out there is gonna win some good stuff tonight all right here we go let's rip this open all right i don't even know oh whoa nelly all right so we got you got the felt in the inside got the packs here we go, guys. Woo. Start right at the top. Our first card of the night. Oh, man. Got the Aaron Judge. <laughs> Can you guys see that? Aaron Judge Auto. He was a good dude. It's number three of five. Um, I met him in the at the 2017 All Star Game, and he was he just seemed like he was happy to be there, and got to watch him do the home run derby. He was hitting balls on top of the roof, I think, in in left field, uh, some mammoth shots. I mean, this this guy's a stud. So he's awesome. Yeah, that's, I'm that's I'm a good first about, card. Yeah, so we got Aaron Judge number one. Do. 
Oh, wow. Somebody's going to be really happy. This is a money card right here. We got the Otani one of Ooh. one. Oh, oh, whoa. One of one. Whoa. <laughs> oh, Nelly. <laughs> oh, That's man. It. You brought some fire tonight, Pat. Oh. We just got an Otani one of one. Are you kidding me? One Are you kidding one. me? Look at that whoever patch. Gets, whoever gets the Angels is about to go absolutely crazy. This is going to be amazing. <laughs> I cannot wait to see who gets the Angels tonight. Oh, man. One of yeah. the viewers of the virtual. This is what we're bringing you with the virtual sports card con. <laughs> Look at this. A one of one of Otani. Patch auto. Look at that patch. That's crazy. I'm good. This is so Otani. I pulled his, uh, it was his oh. 2018 Tops Heritage back in the day. And it was numbered one of... Uh, I believe it was 68, and man, I just pulled another 101. <laughs> wow, good for you, Pat. Wow, someone's going to be happy in a few minutes yeah, here when we I announce who got the right Angels. Woo. All right. This guy, he had a couple homers off me. I know he had one and one in spring training, but we got Miguel Cabrera. Uh, it's, it's a red auto, and it's number two of 10. Pretty nice card. He's tough. I mean, back in the day, this guy could hit a fastball. I mean, he still can. He, man, yeah, he, he had some of the most power I've, I've ever seen from a right-handed hitter. So that's that's a nice that's a nice Miggy right there. Okay, this guy's one of the hottest guys. He's a rookie last year, but we got the Jordan Alvarez, number to ten auto. Somebody's gonna be. I know there's a few collectors that are PC in him and. I really like Alvarez. He, yeah. he was a he was great when he was called up last year. I know some you know I know some people are down on the Astros players right now, and I get why. But he was a, <laughs> he was a younger guy. I don't know how much he was caught up in all that stuff. I, I like I like Alvarez a lot. Yeah. So when I was with the Astros, they traded one of my good friends, Josh Fields, and they just threw threw him in. He was in I think rookie ball at the time. Wow. Um, and yeah, that was a that was a pretty good trade for the Astros. All right, this is my dad's favorite player, and uh, this is who he he always wanted me to grow up to be. Um, Milwaukee Brewers, Robin Yout, patch card auto, yeah, yeah. number three of five. It's yeah. a beautiful card. That's a nice patch right there. All time great, right there. Love Robin it, Robin oh, yeah. yeah, great card, great signature. All right, we got our cut auto. Whoo, I like that. One on one, announcer, Mel Allen. We got, you know, this week in baseball, Mel Allen, Yankees, you know, Hall of Fame. Um, so he's going to go to whoever gets the Yankees in our team. I like this tonight. card. I like this card. I actually got him on a ball right up there, but he's a, he's kind of a tough auto. I mean, you don't really see too much of him. But that's a pretty, that's a nice cut. I like that. Yeah, that's cool. Very nice. 101. All right. All right. A guy that might be in the Hall of Fame someday here soon, uh, Andy Pettit. Auto, red auto, number 25, I believe. 25, yep. The Yankees are doing well in this break. Whoever gets <laughs> yeah. the Yankees is going to be very, very happy as well. <laughs> it's, yeah, they're doing good. All right, we got a young guy. I think he was left off the roster this year. Um, Gavin Lux, number to 10 auto. A lot of people like him. They're high on him. I've never seen him play, um, but heard lots of really good things. I mean, seems like the Dodgers pump out guys every year here. All right. Oh, we just we just lost Mr. K line. He's our next one. We got that's a that's a beautiful autograph though. It's in silver and the black. Well, we got the number number to twenty five. I don't know people love. He was always a great signer. Al would I signed through the mail for twenty dollars. I think he did it for the last like fifteen years. But um, he was always really good with the fans. I, I kind of admired what he did. Oh, that's really interesting. This is the last card. That is one. I wonder what that is. That a jersey. All right, we got Alex Bregman. Oh, nice. And we got. It looks like a Mother's Day. That's that's a uni. That's a uni. It looks like on there. It's not signed, but number to ten. Got the pink Alex Bregman. Now Alex is. He's a pretty awesome guy. I, I I got to witness when he got called up in what was it 2016. He came up and. He was kind of pretty hyped, and I think he started off like one for thirty or something, and he was real down on himself and. One of my buddies, Luke Gregerson, came up to him and said, "Hey, we're gonna sit down all night here, and we're gonna talk." And and he goes, he goes, "You're really good, but this happened to Dustin Pedroia back in the day. He was like one for forty to start his career. I think the next day after we sat around the clubhouse for like two hours, he went, I want to say he went like three for four or something, and then he kind of just broke out after that. So Alex, uh, he's he's had a heck of a career since then. So that, he's that's been pretty good. nice. He's a great player. Obviously, yeah. you know, a lot of. <laughs> 
A lot of people concerned about the Astros, but we'll see how they do. I personally think guys like Bregman are going to continue to go on and have amazing careers. And, and yeah. maybe as a sports card investor, might be a little bit of an investment potential around some of those Astros players right now because they got it. They, they want to go out and prove everyone wrong, and their card prices have not taken off the same way that other players have because yeah, you, of you know, some of the scandal around them. Yeah, you've seen it with like Altuve and Correa. Some of the, the, they were so hyped and, you know, in 16 and 17. Yeah. And, it's 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 uh, yeah you're you're right it, it could be pretty good but yeah Bregman's great he was on the WBC team with with us as well and when we won it and he's got the little alligator arms I hate I, he just gets to those fastballs he's, he's tough he's a tough hitter so <laughs> Pat you did a wonderful job with that break the audience has to be extremely hyped up right now because of the fact that you pulled that Otani Tani, you I, no, mean, I mean that, that is incredible yep. and I mean a lot of these the Yankees with Judge and Pettit and and the Astros with Alvarez and Bregman yeah. and oh man there's yeah, some I, good cards people are excited that. to see who gets those teams in just a minute look at that Otani though man that dual patch Otani woo! that's Ooh. nice that is nice I didn't expect that I didn't expect to pull two one ones out of that but I mean that's that's what you get with diamond icons. You know it's always going to bring fire. So It does. Hey, Pat, thank you so much for coming back on and doing that break, and we're going to go now to announce the winners. All right, guys. Take care. You got it. The sports card market is on fire. Everyone keeps asking, are you a collector or an investor? But we want to know, why should you have to choose? Market Movers is revolutionizing the way you track your collection and discover trending cards. Track thousands of hot cards every day. Set price alerts to know when to buy or sell. Browse for sale listings and find cards under market value. Use advanced ratios to predict the market. Even chart sealed boxes and cases. And now, you can track your entire collection and net profit in Market Movers as you watch the value grow. There has never been a more exciting time to ramp up your game into the sports card world. Collector or investor, you don't have to choose. Market Movers has you covered. And now get 20% off your first payment using promo code VIRTUAL. Go to sportscardinvestor.com and click Market Movers to sign up right now. All right, everybody, are you ready to see who won those spots in the box break? So we've taken everybody who has entered the contest through our website and let's bring up random.org right now. Let's go to that and here is the list. Here we go, here's the list of everybody and we're gonna hit that randomize button. Numbers one through 30 are gonna be assigned, What whoever comes up, numbers one through 30 are gonna be assigned to teams in alphabetical order. Now, obviously not every team got a card, uh, but those who did, who, who are next to teams like the Angels or the Yankees uh, or the Tigers or the Astros or the Dodgers, you guys are going to be happy tonight. So let's go ahead and hit that randomize button. And there we go. And here is the list. So let's go ahead and copy the numbers 1 through 30 over. And we're going to go put this into the spreadsheet. And there you go. So you see on the screen on your left, I know it's a little a little difficult to see, so we're also going to paste this to sportscardinvestor.com, uh, to the virtual 2020 page on sportscardinvestor.com. We will paste all of these winners there in just a moment. But let's see, who got, who got the uh, Angels? Where's the Angels on here? Los Angeles Angels. That is, uh, what's the name on that one, Parker? John M. Jones 7, congratulations to you, sir. You've got that awesome Atani. And a lot of other people, the Yankees, a lot of other people are happy on this list tonight. That will be posted to sportscardinvestor.com in the next couple of minutes. Uh, all right, and this is the same process we're going to follow, by the way, uh, to pick the winners of the other boxes later tonight. There's still time to enter for those other boxes, but time is running out. If you have not entered yet, go to sportscardinvestor.com and click on the virtual 2020 and click the link to enter tonight's contests because later, Spectra, Impeccable, and National Treasures going to be broken live on the virtual and we're giving all the cards away thanks to eBay. All right, guys, let's go ahead and jump into our next segment. We have a very special guest coming up from eBay. We have Nicole Colombo, the, the, the general manager who oversees trading cards for eBay. This little cup may seem small, 
but it comes from a small business. One of thousands on eBay, powered by people, millions of people, all over the country, all working to get you what you want, exactly what you want. And that's no small thing. That's everything. Hi, Nicole. Welcome to the virtual sports card con by Sports Card Investor. We're really excited to have you here. Hi, Jeff. Thank you so much for having me. Absolutely. Absolutely. I'm obviously a, a big customer of yours. I, I am a big advocate of uh, buying cards on eBay. You have obviously a tremendous, tremendous selection. And uh, so uh, so it's an honor to get to talk to you. And, and I'm really curious to hear, uh, first of all, just a little bit more about your background and, and, and kind of how you got into the role that you serve today for uh, eBay. Sure. Um, so I joined eBay almost five years ago. Um, I actually come from a, a very traditional merchandising background before joining eBay. Um, I worked for a lot of the big uh, retailers in San Francisco. So I, I worked at Gap for almost 15 years. I worked for Levi's. I worked for Pottery Barn. Um, and I got my MBA and then decided I wanted to do something a bit different. And a recruiter from eBay reached out and I, I, I made the move over to eBay. And my first job at eBay was running the collectibles division. So it was a big shift from, from retail. Um, and that's where I, I started to learn uh, a lot about, about sports cards. Um, you know, personally, I collected garbage bill kids when I was young. So I'm a collector as well. I'm also really into Star Wars, but sports cards wasn't you know, necessarily my thing. My brother was a big sports cards collector. Um, but as I started to learn more and more about the business, I realized, you know, how many stories there are, how many small businesses started on eBay, how many people were just doing it as a, you know, a hobby and then it ended up being their livelihood um, and, you know, passed on from fathers to sons, just so many stories. So I'm really passionate about it now and I'm so happy um, to be a part of this. And, you know, obviously right now, that's an exciting time for anyone to be involved in the hobby. So I'm um, just really grateful that, uh, you know, it's been five years, I've learned a ton and, and uh, you know, happy to be engaged in it currently. Yeah, for sure. And you're absolutely right. It, it is a very exciting time to be involved in the hobby. The growth over the course of the last year has been just almost astounding, right? And, and what have you, I'm sure, I'm sure being the major transactional website in the hobby that you have seen that reflected at eBay. What, what, what has it, what has it been like? Yeah. You know, it, it's been, it's been really, really fun to look at the numbers. Um, I mean, obviously we have millions of buyers and millions of sellers on eBay, but there has absolutely been an explosion in trading cards recently. Um, you know, and I think a lot of that comes from people are home, you know, they're cleaning out their garages and, you know, they're coming across old, you know, card collections from when they were kids and, and they're getting back into it and they're looking for places to sell it or places to continue to, to fill their collection. Um, I think also people are looking for um, something nostalgic right now. It's, it's a crazy time in the world and, and people, you know, are passionate and happy um, when they collect cards. So, you know, we definitely experienced that boom in the business and eBay and, and we're seeing that, um, you know, across the board. Some fun stats I can share with you. Um, we've seen Basketball cards spike 130% since Q4 2019. We've seen baseball cards spike 50%, and we've seen football cards spike 47%. So really fun to see those trends and the engagement and the activity in, in the hobby. Those that, that's absolutely amazing. And I know it's probably a small category for you right now, but be but watch out for soccer cards because they're 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 on the rise as well. And either, I know they're just still a small percentage of the sports card market, but from a percentage growth standpoint, uh, they're the top part of the sports card market. So it's gonna be really interesting to see how soccer cards play out in the years ahead, especially with the World Cup coming to the US uh, several years from now, it's gonna be fun to watch as well. Absolutely, we're starting to see, uh, we're starting to see the soccer trend uh, growth numbers as well, just as you referred to. Yeah, yeah. So, so. So obviously that's a lot of growth. And, and so for you being in charge of, of you know, the whole trading card and collectibles area at eBay, how are you, how are you adjusting to this? How are you getting, you know, getting ready for, for what is next and what is next for eBay in this area? Um, so, you know, eBay is, um, 
uh, constantly looking for ways to uh, support the community in this area. And we realized that one of the biggest things that people are asking for from us um, is, is stories. You know, we've got 25 years of history in uh, selling sports cards and selling trading cards. Um, so people are looking for, you know, information about the data, the, state, the historical trends, stories about collectors and sellers in the space. Um, so one thing I'm excited to announce is that we're launching um, a new digital content series this week called Uncommon, where we're sharing stories and some fun facts about collectors in the space um, who are big collectors on eBay. Um, so the first one is launching this week, and you can see it on eBay's YouTube channel, and it's featuring MLB player Pat Misha. Um, he's a super fun guy. He's got an amazing, huge uh, trading cards collection. He sourced the majority of it on eBay. Um, and it's just really fun to hear about his personal collection story. Um, so, you know, please go, go view those uncommon videos. And they're really fun. And we'll continue to, sh to share more and more about our business um, and fun facts for, for the community throughout the year. Yeah, and we've, we've had the opportunity to uh, you know, talk to Pat as well, and he's on he's on our virtual lineup here today, and it's it's uh, it's exciting his stories uh, of you know both collecting while being a major league baseball player. It's 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 really neat. I'm sure that's just one of of many kind of fascinating stories around uh, you know collectibles being bought and sold on eBay and sports cards and sports memorabilia that are 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 bought and sold on eBay. What's the maybe the most exciting or kind of most epic, you know, story of, of something uh, being auctioned or sold on eBay that, um, that, you know, caught your eye? That's a great question. Uh, usually when we see uh, an epic sale, an epic card sale, it's tied to a big cultural moment uh, in the business. And the big cultural moment that comes to mind is Michael Jordan. Um, obviously with the Last Dance documentary being released in April, we've seen increased activity from Michael Jordan starting uh, way back in 2019 and carrying into this year. Um, specifically, I can share with you that in April, searches for Michael Jordan increased 285% from the prior month which is really amazing. Um, and it's not just Michael Jordan. Other players who were featured in the documentary were also seeing spikes in sales and in searches. So Isaiah Thomas, Scotty Pippen, uh, Steve Kerr. Um, so it's really just brought you know, this overall boom in, in the basketball business, which has been fun. So um, the most epic sale would have to be a Michael Jordan card since he's hot in my mind right now. Um, and specifically it's the 97 Metal Universe Precious Metal Gems green Michael Jordan card that sold for $350,100, um, which was a record breaking sale and the highest Michael Jordan uh, card sale on eBay. And um, this is via our partnership with PWCC. And it was just really exciting to be, you know, every time we break a record, it, it feels exciting, but this one's been particularly exciting just because you know, the Michael Jordan goodness um, continues to happen and people are just so, um, so excited to, to, you know, really reflect on his career and celebrate it with cards. So it's been really fun to be a part of that. It was nice to have that even when there weren't any sports, you know, sports were paused, but we all as sports fans had the documentary to look forward to and everybody in the trading card industry, uh, you know, was watching it and it certainly caused that. And it's kind of an interesting point. You talked about the increase in search volume, you know, what people were searching for. And as a sports card investor, I'm sure there's an interesting correlation between sports volume and actual prices of cards because we actually saw, obviously we saw a large increase in a lot of those players you just mentioned and their buying activity, uh, you know, card prices as well as sales volume during that period. So yeah, real, real fascinating stuff. So with the growth of people, you know, like me buying sports cards from an investing standpoint and, and a lot of people are looking at it now, there's probably, you know, a lot of people out there that are doing heavy volumes on eBay as a buyer, as a seller, every single month more than ever before. Um, one of the you know one of the challenges as a sports card investor that you that you always look at is you have to look at your profit margin and your profit margin is always impacted by fees right when you go to sell the card down the road you've got to keep in mind that oh there's going to be fees attached to selling that card if i sell through ebay um but you want to try to obviously maintain as much profit margin as you can so any suggestions any recommendations for for people who are looking to help essentially kind of make the most uh, out of their fees and their investments? Yeah, no, that's a great question. 
I realize that um, margins can be tight, particularly if you're buying cards and flipping them, you're a consignment seller, you know, definitely, you know, fees are, play a, a big part into your, your strategy and um, managing your business. So um, that is something we're constantly looking at. I mean, obviously, um, we want to do right by our sellers. Um, so I am happy to announce that as of tomorrow, August 1st, there is going to be a change um, that will benefit sellers. So sellers can get more zero insertion fee listings on eBay, um, meaning that you can put more items up for sale without incremental fees. Um, the number of, of zero insertion fees that are increasing really depends on whether or not you have a store or what your store level is. But I can tell you for every level, the increase will be meaningful. Um, so this is really exciting, particularly for people in the trading card space, because if you're a seller sitting on a bunch of cards um, that you want to sell, but you don't want to pay the incremental fees to actually just put them on eBay, now you have the opportunity to list them on eBay and get more eyeballs on those on those cards. So um, this change goes into effect August 1st, and if you'd like to see more details about it, please go to ebay.com forward slash announcements. So that's one big change. Um, I do have another um, idea that I was thinking I could tell sellers as a way to get some money back from eBay. Um, we have the eBay Partner Network, which is eBay's marketing affiliate net channel. Um, so sellers can sign up for that. And now, um, if you're a seller and you sign up for the eBay Partner Network um, and you're sharing your listings outside of eBay, and one of those shared listings actually sells, then you can get your final value fee credited back. So it's actually a great way for you to um, make money back and not have to pay fees on the items that you sell. Um, so I would encourage all sellers to sign up for the eBay Partner Network and, and to look into this. Um, so you can go to your seller center to find more details on the specific um, change in the eBay Partner Network program. That's huge news. That is absolutely huge news. I hope everybody who's listening right now who's selling on eBay realizes that Nicole just broke some pretty big news to us that both the both the uh, you know free insertion fees that they're going to be doing, and we'll put up that URL so people can go and read more details on that program and how that's going to work. But the free insertion fees, that is absolutely a great thing for sellers who want to sell a large volume of cards because that can be a prohibitor, but, it, but that will absolutely help people put more cards on eBay. Um, and then also uh, the fact that if you promote your own eBay sales items and if you have an eBay Partner Network account, that that can help you drastically reduce you know, the fees associated with your transaction as well. And that is absolutely paramount because I will tell you, I see all the time, I follow a lot of sports card accounts on Twitter, on Instagram, on Facebook, and I will see all the time people promoting their own eBay listings. And they'll, you know, they'll post to say, hey guys, I, I just you know, drop these on eBay, check it out, I'm selling this on eBay, and it will just be a link to the eBay listing. But, but most of the time, those, those people are not signed up for the eBay Partner Network and they therefore are not using a partner network encoded link. And now what you're saying is that if they sign up for the eBay partner network, which I know is free to sign up for, and they use an eBay partner network encoded link to their own item, that it's going to help tremendously with their own fees that they would otherwise experience. So that is, that is great information and certainly something that sellers should absolutely be taking advantage of. Yeah, th thank you so much, Jeff, for explaining that in your own words, because it is, these are two meaningful changes, and I, I really hope that sellers take advantage of them. Um, and, you know, I, I really can empathize with tight margins in this space. So hopefully it makes a difference. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so as we look back, Nicole, we'll kind of wrap up with this. As we look back on these last few months where, you know, obviously COVID-19 brought a pause to sports, and I... When that originally happened, I don't know how you reacted. I'll tell you that I reacted by going, oh boy, like this is not gonna be good for trading cards was my first reaction. But then of course, you know, the, the market did go down for a while, the second half of March, but then all of a sudden in April, everything exploded. And we're now seeing, of course, now we've got sports started again, but even prior to that, we, had, we saw a buildup and buildup where the market absolutely exploded. And you talked earlier about the last dance fueling some of that. But it's been beyond that. It's been so many different types of sports, so many different types of sports cards, both modern and old. Did this surprise you that this was all happening during, you know, when there was no sports on? What do you, what do you kind of make of the last few months? Yeah, you know, it, it, it did surprise me. Obviously, at first, when, when the, the shelter in places started happening, no one knew what to expect or how that was going to impact business. Um, 
but you know, the, after, the stories we learned about people just really getting back into the hobby and about them embracing the hobby and, and finding something to do while they're home and cleaning out their garages, et cetera, um, it started to make more sense. Um, but then beyond that, you know, I think the most shocking thing that I've seen in the business is that basketball has really shifted to the number one um, sports card category versus baseball, which a year ago was 100% baseball. Actually, it was always baseball. And now it's basketball. Um, and yes, I think a lot of that was, was having to do with the last dance and the Michael Jordan um, trend that's going on. But I think it's beyond that. Um, and it definitely is beyond that. In that, you know, my hypothesis is that there's a lot of people in the sneakers and streetwear space who are starting to get into card collecting. They're collectors, they collect sneakers, and, and those uh, enthusiasts tend to um, resonate more with basketball. They're following basketball players, they're wearing their sneakers, they, you know, they're really getting into that um, aspect of the sport, and so they gravitate more towards the basketball cards. And we have a huge sneakers streetwear business at eBay, so it makes sense to start seeing the two overlap um, and that's, um, you know, helping to fuel um, the shift in the business to basketball. But to me, that's been the biggest surprise. Um, but, you know, baseball is still amazing. And, and obviously, there's such a huge um, collection um, of strength in baseball cards. But the C basketball is number one. It's been pretty, pretty exciting. I think a lot of people who have been in the hobby for a long time have been surprised by that because, you know, you rewind the clock. 30, 40 years ago, and basketball cards really were the afterthought. I mean, that's why, you know, the the Michael Jordan rookie cards, a lot of them are so expensive now because people didn't really care about them back in the day and they didn't take good care of them as a result. But now, you know, the the basketball cards today, you're right, have really, really uh, become paramount. So it's uh, it's been fascinating to watch. Nicole, thank you so much for joining. We really appreciate eBay's support here at the Virtual Sports Card Con 2020. It's awesome. All of the things you're doing for our viewers of Sports Card Investor, really, really appreciated. Uh, and thank you so much for being part of the show tonight. My family, they're all that matters to me. I had moved here many, many years ago to take care of my mom, and she passed away from lung cancer. A few years later, my father got lung cancer. After he passed, all these paradigms kind of shifted in me. I started looking for a deeper meaning. Within about a year and a half or two, I had opened up a sports car shop. I decided that I was going to list my personal items on my charity eBay store, which is called Giving Back to Charity and I was going to donate part of the proceeds to St. Jude. No child should ever have to go through what my parents have gone through. And that's why I connected to St. Jude. Our purpose is really clear. We're all about finding cures and saving children. No family ever receives a bill, not for treatment, travel, housing, or food, because we want to ensure that all a family worries about is helping their child get better. Sellers like Marcel, who've made a choice to support St. Jude, are making a choice to support a child or a family they may never meet. By choosing to support St. Jude through eBay, every transaction can mean a child has a better chance to beat cancer. There's no end game for me. It's a journey. I created this to help St. Jude, to help those that suffer, and to create a platform for all of us to connect. All right, thank you so much to Nicole at eBay for that interview. They've been an awesome partner of the Virtual 2020 and Sports Card Investor. And uh, they've been very gracious tonight with all of our giveaways. We really appreciate eBay's participation in the show tonight. And uh, we're just about to uh, bring on our first dealer tonight, a big eBay dealer, fittingly so. Before we do, I know a lot of people have been asking in the chat about, about the contest winners. People entered with their email address and they wanted to know why the contest winners didn't, weren't full email addresses. The answer is that we removed the at symbol and the end of the email address. The reason why we did that was for people's privacy. So what you saw on the contest winners, that is the first part of the email address. So if that first part of the email address matched your email address, 
you are a winner. We just didn't want to put the second part of the email address up on the screen tonight for privacy reasons. That will continue to be the case for the winners that we announced throughout tonight's show. But let's bring on our first dealer. I am extremely excited, extremely excited to introduce this dealer. Those of you who have been watching Sports Card Investor on YouTube for a while probably saw my interview with Daniel Cochran uh, a few months ago. Daniel is a, a, a younger kid in the hobby, but an absolutely amazing dealer with an inspiring story. Daniel, welcome live to the virtual 2020. Thank you for having me and thank you for this great opportunity. Absolutely. And we've got some great cards to show you tonight. But first of all, Daniel, tell everybody a little bit about your story and how you got into this. All right. So for the people that uh, did not see the uh, past video back in, I believe, March, early April, possibly early April, I started uh, sports cards and memorabilia back in 2017 in a hospital when where I was having brain surgery. Uh, uh, where? Where to next? Uh, I started this by going to my uh, local card shop at the time, On Deck Sports Cards, and I started by ripping my first box of, what was it, 2017 TriStar. I can't believe I remember this with my terrible memory. I hit a Max Kepler rookie card auto and a Francisco Lindor. Uh, five, all those, both of those were five-star autos. It really started off from there. I eventually got into memorabilia. Uh, I've had my whole family collects. My mom collects Barbie dolls. My father collects bunches of random stuff. But anyways, uh, it all went off from there. Uh, eventually, started to get into memorabilia. Like I said, Kobe, uh, Kobe uh, Bryant autograph uh, ball. Then I met uh, last night's uh, star. Got baseball cards. Joe Davis. Uh, what else? It's an, it's That's absolutely- basically. Absolutely amazing story. Uh, and, and if you want to see Daniel's whole story in more detail, I mean, just a crazy survival story. He's up at, you're up at what, Mayo Clinic in Minnesota. Is that right? Yes, sir. And that's when you went to your first sports card shop uh, in yes, between sir. going through surgery operations, brain surgeries. Absolutely inspiring story to see what Daniel has been able to build in the wake of going so much going on personally, but using that and his love and connection for the hobby in order to now create this entire business. And Daniel, how old are you? I am now 17 years old. During the uh, last video, I was 16 and uh, had my birthday soon thereafter. Uh, Other than that, I started this when I was 14. And you can see Daniel's whole story if you go to our YouTube uh, uh, channel, which you're on right now, Sports Card Investor. If you go back in the videos back a few months, you can find the video with Daniel's whole story. But, but tonight is about selling cards, and Daniel is a serious card seller. Don't let his age fool you. I have seen Daniel at local card shows. He sometimes comes to Atlanta and comes to card shows in Atlanta, and he is the real deal. And tonight, we are going to showcase a lot of his cards that are currently for sale on eBay. And what, will you, what you want to do as a viewer is you want to go to the Sports Card Investor website right now, Go to the virtual 2020 link and then from there there is a link to d's cards there's a dealer page for d's cards that is linked on sportscardinvestor.com on the virtual 2020 page go to that dealer page and from there there is a link to his ebay story and that's where all of these items are going to be listed tonight and if you follow the link from sportscardinvestor.com over to d's cards ebay store you're gonna get a special coupon and i think what is it 15 percent off anything listed on your store is that right yes sir, yes, sir. awesome so uh, what daniel's gonna do now is he's gonna show us a bunch of the cards that he currently has listed on his store keeping in mind that i think the prices you're gonna show are what you have them listed for but then everyone if they use the coupon is going to get them for 15 percent, or automatically will apply the coupon to get them all for 15 percent less is that right Correct. Awesome. All right, Daniel. Well, let's go ahead and get into it. And if you see a card you like tonight, Daniel, are you open to taking offers on some of these as well? Most definitely. Okay. So if you see a card you like tonight, but you you wanna you wanna try to compete and get a little bit of an offer on it, you're welcome to do that. Of course, it may sell because a lot of people are gonna be watching this tonight. But uh, we're excited to have this take place on eBay, a wonderful platform for this to take place. Let's start showing those cards, Daniel. Let's go. All right, so uh, the first two items that I will have up for sale are both sets. Uh, 
all these items, I obviously cannot sh show all of them at once since there's at least 150 in both. But just for a uh, quick view, this is the 2017 premium optic set. Jason Tatum, LeBron, all the amazing stars from this product. Jason Tatum, uh, Donovan Mitchell, Bam. Other than that, uh, that one is listed at, I believe, 1565 uh, obviously, or best offer. All items on my store have uh, best offer. Next, this is the 2017-18, uh, excuse me, the Prism Mosaic complete set. Again, all the same stars from the last optic set. Then let's get into some of the singles. First up, Pete Alonzo BGS 10 Pristine Pop 2, I believe, unless it has changed in the past month or so. That is listed at 615. Next up, we got a Mike Trout Finest 2020 autograph listed at 895. Again, remember all the stuff I am accepting offers on. More than willing to negotiate any price. Next up, we have a Drew Log Noah Fan uh, jersey numbered card, three of five, psychedelic. And I believe if someone just buys it now, they're going to get 15% off. So if you want to take advantage of the buy it now, you get 15% off right away, or you can take a chance and make an offer. Although someone may, someone else may buy it this evening. Again, all of this on Daniel's eBay page. Go to Sports Card Investor Virtual 2020. Then go to the D's Cards dealer page to click over to his eBay store to get a 15% off coupon when you get there. Yes, sir. Next up, we have a Lamar Jackson lot of three. I uh, won't take it out at the moment, but that is listed up for about 1000 Next one, LeBron Noir, Kobe jersey number, 8 of 25. Cool little card. That's listed up for 575 Next up, a Luka Doncic, level 2. That is listed for four forty-five. Luka Doncic Revolution PSA ten rookie card. Uh, that is listed for six sixty. Uh, out of fifty PSA nine Zion Williamson uh, rookie Revolution insert L fifty. Kaboom, Anthony Davis super dope card in person, especially since he's in his Lakers uniform. After this, we have three concourses, one premier level, all Luka Doncic. This is listed up for, I believe, somewhere in high eights, low nines. And That's a nice lot there. That's a really nice lot. I like Select. I talked about that last night. I really like Select. Yes, yeah, sir. I feel like it's very undervalued at this time. Next up, Damian Lillard, one of ten. This does have a couple of surface issues. Uh, super cool card. It is a rookie. I believe that is it for the marquee items. Uh, next up, we'll go to the about 100 or so uh, cards I have for sale uh, uh, besides this. Awesome. And while he's switching, I want everybody to give Daniel a follow on Instagram. He is, he is D's cards underscore 13 on Instagram. D's cards underscore 13 on Instagram. Go give him a follow right now. Uh, this kid is amazing. As you can tell, he's got an amazing collection. He's the real deal, everybody. Follow this kid, D's Cards underscore 13 on Instagram. All right, let's, we, we see the card, Daniel. Let's, get, let's, let's keep going. All right, I appreciate it. All right, first up, Nikola Jokic. Uh, all, these pricing, all, this, all the prices that you'll see on the uh, upcoming cards are the listing price. Again, more than willing to negotiate and make a deal. First up, Nikola Jokic. I will not go through the price since that is subject to change with any offer. This is a lot of three. Jimmy Garoppolo, uh, all refractors, all rookie cards. Next up, this guy had a crazy game earlier today. Jaron Jackson, level th three. Next up, Optic, rookie card, Pascal Siakam. Uh, in it to win it, Luka Doncic, Mosaic, Silver. I don't know exactly what these are called. I think it's just called Mosaics. PSA 9, Grant Williams. Uh, gold, number to 10, 2 of 10. I think some Boston fan out there is going to want that. All right. Jazz Chisholm, I believe that's how I pronounce it. PSA 10, first Bowman autograph. Christian Yelich, Bowman Chrome, PSA 10. Kawhi Leonard, SP Authentic, PSA 9 rookie card. I have two of these. Uh, Ronald Acuna, 
uh, Topps Chrome update. Topps Chrome is finally getting some love. You know, that stuff used to be really cheap compared to what the papers were doing. Next up, Bowman, uh, Bowman draft picks Aaron Judge. I'm not sure what his first year was, maybe 13, but anyways. This is two PSA 9s. One second. Ah. Anyways, two PSA 9s, both Luca rookie revolutions. Next up, times five. All Lori Markinens, all PSA 10. Some of the slabs are a little bit scratched on that. Next up, DeAndre Aiden out of 175 rookie card. Blue fast break disco. Hank Aaron, uh, a little bit of vintage coming up. Uh, it's 1975 PSA 6. All right, Wander Franco. I lied. <laughs> Still doing some modern stuff. That is most of my collection. And this is 3 of 10 box topper. Things are super cool. Refractor PSA 9, Pete Alonzo, first Bowman. Out of, uh, never mind. Topps Chrome Refractor, PSA 10, Fernando Tatis. I think this is going to be a super big card in the future. Uh, out of 250, one of 250, Victor Robles, PSA 10. Out of 500, PSA 9, DeMar DeRozan Refractor. Rookie card, Bruce Brown, PSA 10, silver rookie card. Aaron Judge, Bum Chrome, uh, Mini. PSA 10. Casa Santa de Cumbo. PSA 10. Uh, premium level. Contenders Optic. Shea Gilgis Alexander. PSA 9. Rookie Auto. 1969. Tops Hank Aaron. PSA 10. Uh, <laughs> excuse me. PSA 6. Only if it was a 10. <laughs> Joel Embiid. Prism Rookie Card. PSA 10. Undervalued, getting that in bead. I like them. Yes, sir. I sold one of them. I had two of those uh, at the last show, actually, that we attended back in February. Uh, had two of those, sold one crazy undervalued at the time. I believe I sold it for 90 bucks. Wish I could take that back. But, anyways, PSA 9, uh, Minka Fix Patrick rookie card autograph from Contenders Optic. I love the potential on these. Uh, these cards, I feel like if Bellinger has another great season, could go up like his uh, Tops update, I believe. Tops update, Top Series 2, whatever it was. PSA 10, Heritage rookie card. Mo Bamba finally <laughs> getting some value. Uh, silver rookie card, PSA 10. Next up, Og and Unobi. OG and Unobi, however, said. PSA 10, silver rookie card. Wendell Carter, PSA 10, silver rookie card. Out of 25, Colin Sexton, up and coming. Out of five, uh, Colin Sexton, rookie card from Opulence. This is a lot of two, Shea Gilgis Alexander, hoops rookie cards. Next up, a little bit of football. Chris Godwin, Brady's new receiver, PS, uh, out of 10, uh, rookie, uh, rookie roundup. Next up, DK Metcalf, silver rookie card. Back to basketball. Gold plate. Since it is a plate, there is some surface issues with this. Uh, LeBron. Giannis Antetokounmpo, out of 299. Blue select. John Collins, rookie card, number two, 199. Hometown guy. Silver, John Collins, select. Not numbered. Startups, Jason Tatum, uh, rookie insert. Nikola Jokic, uh, Revolution rookie card. I believe this is a lot of five, four or five on this. Marvin Bagley, all rookie card prisms. Out of 25, die cut, Kawhi Leonard. Trey Young, level two. Rookie card. DK Metcalf, Rookie Aurora, number 10. You got some nice stuff here, Daniel. I'm impressed, man. Thank you. Patented, patented penmanship, Nick Chubb, gold, rookie auto, number 10, 4 of 10. 
my old, no, sorry, Miles Bridges. Uh, this does have a little dimple up here. The price sticker's bro- blocking it. Rookie courtside, silver. Love James Worthy, time. number 20. Uh, James, uh, repeat that, please. I'm sorry, just uh, sorry to distract you. I said, I love the courtside. I love select courtside, man. <laughs> yes, but sir. This James yes, Worthy sir. is a beautiful card, too. I love it, too. Yes, sir. <laughs> James Worthy, number 25. Super cool card in person. Aaron Rodgers, gold. Uh, I don't know what to call this. Gold sensations from select, three of ten. Kobe Bryant, this there is a surface scratch on this, number two, two ninety-nine. Uh mosaic, rookie card, Shea Gilchris Alexander. Stair Masters, Luka Doncic, Mosaic. Gold Wave Team from T- Optic Team All. Paul, uh, Paul George. No, it's a short print. Don't know what it's number two. If there is even a count on that, Kyle Guy, uh, pink mosaic, uh, pink mosaic number to forty nine. Lamar Jackson, Phoenix rookie. John Collins, super cool patch, jersey numbers number to seventy five. That is a rookie. This guy had a crazy good game. How many nights ago? Two, I believe. A lot of five. Beckett RCR nine five lot of two. A uh, super cool old Jordan card. Uh, short print number. I don't know. Oh, one of twenty. I believe that's just the set. But SPP. Uh, Patrick Ewing BGS eight. Uh, Fleer nineteen eighty six. I believe that's a rookie card. Uh, Jerry Kalinick super super cool patch from Leaf. Player worn, rookie card, patch auto. Jared Kalinick, again, number 275 from Sterling. Bo Bo, pink pulsar, uh, rookie card. All right, Daniel, we've got about one minute left. Let's get a, let's okay. get a little fire here right. in the last minute. All right, sounds good. Out of five, one, one of five, Dwayne Wade, super cool patch. Anthony Davis, jersey numbered. There is some surface issues with this. Uh, jersey number 23 of 50. Uh, BGS 10, number 299. Brendan McKay. Ben Simmons finally starting to go up. Uh, 0.5 away from quad. Rookie card out of 25. Josh Allen, BGS 95 from Encased. Let's do three more cards. All right. Uh, Donovan Mitchell, fast break. Rookie card. Let's see. Uh, John Smoltz. To 29 and to finish nice. it off, the nice. Kawhi Leonard uh, stained glass. Ooh, that's a good way to finish. I get camera went a little out of focus there, which is unfortunate because that's uh, oh. those stained glass cards. Is that 2019? There you go. Look at that. Is that 2019 20 mosaic? Is that what that is? Uh, yes, sir. That's a beautiful set, man. That's a beautiful set. Congratulations, Daniel. Thanks so much for joining the virtual man and for everybody out there. Let's please show Daniel some love and support. This kid is an absolutely amazing dude. Uh, as you can see, he's super serious when it comes to cards. Daniel, tell everyone once again how they can follow you. All right, you can find me on eBay, Instagram, Facebook, uh, and my website, uh, that is thesecards.com. Instagram is thesecards underscore 13. Facebook is thesecards13. And uh, uh, I believe that's it. eBay is awesome. thesecards underscore 13. I believe I mentioned that. (laughs) You can find, obviously you can find Daniel's eBay store as well as the eBay stores of all of the dealers who are taking part in the virtual 2020. You can go to ebay.com slash trading cards and eBay has been gracious enough to feature Daniel as well as all of the dealers participating in the virtual 2020 on their main trading cards page right now at ebay.com slash trading cards. And Daniel had a very special giveaway. Daniel got a $100 eBay gift card, which we are giving to a random viewer this evening. And we have just randomized and pulled the name. This is again, the first part of the email address. The winner of Daniel's $100 eBay gift card is John Crocker 83. John Crocker 83, Uh, congratulations. That is yours. Thank you so much, Daniel, for joining the virtual 2020. Absolutely. It's wonderful to have Daniel on the show, uh, and it's, uh, it's been great to interview him. And by the way, it's, it's been great to interview him while standing in front of this beautiful piece of artwork. And thank you to the many of you out there who've watched the virtual the last few days and have inquired about how you can own such a beautiful piece of artwork for your home. 
Uh, I have an exclusive deal with Jay Geeker Studio, the amazing artist who put this custom painting together. And uh, he is available uh, through Sports Card Investor to do some custom Jordan artwork for you. It is amazing, isn't it? If you're interested, please email art at sportscardinvestor.com. Again, email art at sportscardinvestor.com for more information. And let's give you a little close up look at that Jordan right now. All right, I'm excited to bring in our next guest this evening. Tim Getch is the owner uh, and the founder of ComC. And many of you out there know that ComC, which is short for Check Out My Cards, is an awesome way to buy and sell trading cards. And they are big partners with eBay. One of the really cool features about ComC is that now when you send your cards to ComC and put them in ComC's digital collection, you can push those cards over to eBay and get them listed on eBay as well as auction them on eBay. It's a really cool feature with ComC and even and another compelling reason to ship cards to ComC because they'll handle all of that for you, all the eBay listings, as well as all the shipping and communication with the people who end up buying the cards. It's very cool. And Tim is about to give you all a very special offer. He's about to break some news about some new things ComC is doing and give you tonight a very special offer that is only available for viewers of the virtual. So without further ado, let me bring in uh, Tim Gatch, the founder of ComC. All right, Tim, welcome to the Virtual 2020 by Sports Card Investor. It's awesome to have you here. It's, uh, it's, it's great to have you as part of this. I'm glad to be here. This is a long time in the making, and I'm glad to be a part of it. Well, thank you. And I know you've been a big part of the National every year. This year is obviously a little bit different. We don't have the National going on, but I imagine despite that, I imagine ComC is doing really well right now. What, what, what are things looking like from a business perspective? Uh, this is the most insane growth we've ever seen. Uh, we we're already doing almost double the volume um, over the last month or so. And in the past week, we saw about a 50% increase in our in our sales. So I actually had to send a message to the team last night because uh, just in the last two days, we got more orders uh, express or rushed orders like eBay orders and stuff like that uh, than we normally get in a week. Uh, so the the team is, is gearing up to work overtime this weekend. Uh, we actually, in the last three months, uh, hired 25 people, grew from about 100 to 125, maybe 130 now. And we already have plans to hire another 20, 25 people in the next few months. So we'll probably be, be around 150 uh, employees by the end of the year. Wow, that's absolutely incredible. Did you know it could get any hotter? I mean, it's already been hot. Did you know? I mean, the last, it's amazing, isn't it? It, it? It's, it is amazing. It's also not totally surprising. The thing that I've seen over the last number of years is the amount of money that's being spent in the industry. The amount of uh, money players are getting paid, all the TV deals, like there's so much interest in trading or in sports. And it's only inevitable that something would light the fire and that would transfer to trading cards. And there is already a trend. You were seeing this in the last year. Uh, and then with COVID, it just took fire. It's, it's now, this is the, the combination of events that caused everything to go nuts. And do you, like me, feel like this is only going to continue to go up from here uh, in the years ahead? Yeah, so I, I know that the trading card hobby has been cyclical. And obviously, it was huge in the 90s. And now, uh, 
so many people are being reminded about it. Like it's it's in everybody's face. Even just this past week with the one point eight million dollar LeBron, now people that weren't following trading cards at all are hearing about it. Like it's 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 sparking interest. And I I like to say people are catching the bug again. I know as a kid, I basically got addicted to trading cards and it only takes a spark, something to get right back into it and people are going to remember it and it's fun. And so I think that uh, there's a lot of new dynamics that we haven't seen in the hobby before. This is the first time people coming back to the hobby uh, actually initially collected a lot of them thinking that this was a long-term investment. Um, the hobby changed a lot over the last number of years. So now when people are coming back, they have a career. They have, they've they been doing uh, other things with their life, but now they get to rejoin trading cards and, and re-spark that part of their life. So it, it's, I think there's a lot that's going to stick and this is a new world that we're living in. I agree. I agree. And what a what a fun way to make some money. You and I get to do it kind of from the business standpoint of of being, you know, service providers in the hobby of different types and but I know, I know you probably also do it do you do it personally from an investing standpoint as well like I do? Do you have your own little collection going on? Do uh, I do a combination. I have a personal collection. Uh there's a number of players that I super collect, particularly any buddy that I actually got a chance, uh, chance to be on the basketball court with. So there's a number of people in the Seattle area that I've played with. And so I try to get every card I possibly can of them. But then I also love watching sports, looking, especially like in the preseason, uh, seeing players that I think are going to do well, and then buying up a bunch of their cards. And historically, you could buy them really cheap. Not not so much anymore, but the market is really moving. So it, it's really exciting. I, I definitely have my share of Giannis rookies that I picked up for 50 cents yeah. and, and all that. Uh, unfortunately, a few years ago, I had... 30 prism Giannis is on the site at 30 bucks and one day they all disappeared on eBay. Wow. So yeah, I thought it was a good day. I'm like, Oh, 800, 900 bucks in sales. Yeah. I wish I wish I hadn't had them all up for sale back then. Wow. Somebody got a pretty good deal They're They're probably still telling that story today about the day they bought that lot up. That's funny. Well, so obviously with this growth that, you know, ComC scene, that the hobby scene in general, I know come some challenges and, and I, I get the emails from ComC being a ComC customer myself. So I've seen, you know, the, the shipping time and that type of thing, it's taking a little longer. I, am, I imagine that's what hiring all of these extra employees is designed to help, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. In, in particular, the shipping team uh, were increasing. We already staffed it up a lot more and it wasn't enough. So we're, we're adding another 20 people to the shipping team. Um, and, and really that kind of gets to uh, some exciting news that I expect we'll be able to talk more about in the coming year, but uh, we need to make some significant investments to, to help out with all the growth that's happening. Uh, now is a perfect time. We've got all this history. We know how long it takes, how, how much effort it takes to do these different things. And with the growth of the hobby, now is a great time for us to invest in our future. And so we are interested in, for the first time, opening up an opportunity for people to invest in ComC. Oh, and wow. so uh, we are testing the waters. If you are interested in investing in ComC, uh, there's an email address you can uh, just inquiry, send an inquiry to. It's invest at comc.com. Uh, and there we'll, we'll be talking more about that, but uh, it now is an insane time. We have a, a lot of great opportunities and we, we see a really exciting future. Yeah, for sure. Well, you certainly got the infrastructure already built, uh, you know, with the way your business model works and the secure storage of the cards that you offer that I think if now you can reinvest and, and potentially raise some investment, I imagine, you know, you could take things to the next level. And I imagine that next level is going to be an amazing place to be. Yeah, yeah. 
Good. Well, that's great. Well, I appreciate you breaking the news here on the virtual 2020 here. You're, everyone is now knows that ComC is uh, taking open for investment. So invest at ComC.com is how you would get in touch with Tim and his team. Awesome. Very good. And Tim, I know that, you know, there's there, we, we jumped into talking about ComC, but there's probably some people listening that don't really know how ComC is different from, you know, let's say an eBay or some of the other sites in the industry. What, what makes ComC unique? So from day one, we decided to offer a consignment service where all of our sellers sent their items to us and we would do all the heavy lifting to scan the items, inventory them, do all the shipping as the cards sell, do the customer service so that our customers could enjoy collecting without the headaches of trying to list things online, trying to go to the post office, dealing with uh uh, any payment processing services, all this other headaches that uh, really detract from the joy of collecting. So uh, our, our mission is to help our fellow collectors enjoy the hobby. And by uh, basically offering the ability to outsource all the legwork to us, uh, we're, we're really helping people enjoy the hobby in a whole new way. So uh, we also, uh, in addition to letting people buy and sell on ComC, we list the inventory on eBay so you can get exposure on the two largest platforms uh, all at the same time. You manage your inventory in one place. And then because everything's in one place, buyers have the ability to take their time. You don't have to place an order right away. On eBay and on other platforms, the average order size is really small. It's typically about two or three cards per order. Because we house the inventory and let you buy from many sellers at the same time, you can increase your average order size. So our ComC members, their orders on average are 40 cards. And you can imagine a 40 card package is way more efficient. So we're allowing our customers to save a lot of money on shipping as opposed to having to buy from all those sellers separately and having to pay postage and everything else. So we're just trying to make the, the hobby more efficient and, and more enjoyable. And for those listeners who maybe haven't tried ComC yet or, or maybe some of those who have, do you have something, something that you could maybe entice them with? So actually, one of the things that we launched this year is our new Elite service. If you're browsing ComC, you'll notice some cards have a, a black, typically a black background and a really sharp photo. Uh, that new Elite service we use for cards that are going to sell for typically about 100 or more. But for right now, you can send us up to 10 cards. We, we ask that they be cards typically that would sell for about $25 or more and we'll do free processing. So you can try out the service without having to pay us any money. Uh, you just use your account, go to the submission wizard, uh, put in an elite submission for up to 10 cards. And then on the paperwork that you're gonna send into us, simply write SCI 10, so like sports card investor 10, and we'll give you free processing on that. So we, we want you to enjoy the, the hobby, try it out, see what it's like. Uh, and then we also have, a uh, uh, big promotion going on with eBay, uh, NBA's back promotion. We have some amazing auctions that are going to be going live the first week of NBA. And that includes a Kawhi Leonard Prism rookie uh, gold. So we're going to be auctioning off a, a gold Kawhi uh, Prism rookie. So you're going to want to keep an eye uh, on what's going on with the, the auctions. That's a big one. That's a big card right there. That's a, that's a that's a really nice card. Not only not only the first year of Prism in 2012, but then a gold from the very first year of Prism. That's amazing. Great card to auction off. And and our listeners, I'm sure, are going to be excited about your new elite service. And 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 thank you, by the way, so much, Tim, very graciously offering this code just to people who watch Sports Card Investor and who are part of this virtual Sports Card Con 2020. And the code again, Tim, you said SCI10 when someone sends in a submission. Yeah, and make sure that it gets to us by the end of August. So you have about a month to, to okay. take advantage of that. Just write it on the submission and we will apply the discount and, and you'll get to try that service out for free. Awesome. Now you said something a little earlier that caught my ear. You said that you, were, you had you'd got some cards, collected some cards of guys you played 
basketball you were on the court with. So tell me about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so I got a chance to play some pro-am basketball here probably 10, 15 years ago. If you look at our blog, uh, some of the early posts are about me getting dunked on by Nate Robinson. That was the summer before he went to the NBA. I was not prepared for what he was capable of. Is there a photo? Uh, is there a photo? Of there's of no, you? There's is no there the photo. poster photo? The poster, no posterization? Photo. Yeah, that, I was actually playing with uh, Jamal Crawford's team. Uh, Brandon mm -hmm. Roy was our coach. He was still in college, so he wasn't allowed to play. And then uh, we actually made it to the championship game of this uh, little tournament that was a Sean Kemp tournament. And then Sean Kemp joined our team and played uh, in the championship game. And then there's a number of other players, Doug Christie. Um, it, 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 I've gotten a few, some bunch of smaller players that yeah, actually, I grew up in Minnesota, so Devin George. Uh, I, I just like to find find cards of a variety of players that I've, I've had a connection with and uh, it makes the, the hobby a little bit more fun. Very neat, very neat. Although I imagine, uh, <laughs> I imagine you were probably a little sad when uh, when the team moved from Seattle, which I know you guys are based, uh, to uh, to Oklahoma City. I imagine. Do you still follow the Thunder, or is it like too painful now to watch them? Well, that's that's way way totally disconnected. We're looking forward to getting the the Sonics back someday. And actually, I'm a I huge huge Storm fan. I've had season tickets with the Storm for about five years. Uh, I. I massive collector of WNBA cards. Uh, so that's another another passion project that's not necessarily trying to invest. It's just, I, I love the WNBA. So excited to watch them get started here too. For sure. Tim, this has been great. Thank you so much for being part of the virtual 2020 and coming on Sports Card Investor. We really appreciate it. It's awesome to have Tim on the show and also awesome is going to be our next guest. We are going to our second dealer of this evening. We're going to Incredible Collectibles. Juan Vento of Incredible Collectibles. Let's go ahead and bring him on the show. Welcome Juan to the virtual 2020. Hey Jeff, how are you doing today? I'm doing great, man. And I know you are down there in South Florida. I see the, I see the Dolphins jersey. I love the enthusiasm. That's right, baby. We got to represent here. 305. There you go, for sure. 305 indeed. So Juan is a big uh, eBay seller. Um, and uh, Juan's about to show us a bunch of cards. You can get to Juan's store. And it, by the way, 10% off deal on, on, I think, all the cards in Juan's store. You can get to that deal. Go to sportscardinvestor.com. Click on the virtual 2020. And there's a dealer page for, for incredible collectibles as part of today's schedule. Click onto that. And then there's a link to Juan's eBay store. And go over to Juan's eBay store. Go ahead and get there now because he's going to start showing us some of the cars that he has for sale tonight. And you're going to want to be able to be the first person to bid on these or buy these. And so tell me, Juan, are these, I know people can buy them at, I think, 10% off. eBay will automatically apply the coupon. Are you open to best offers on some of these as well? Yeah, so everything in my store, Jeff, is uh, uh, buy it now, OBO. So uh, looking forward to any offers they're willing to submit. Uh, I also don't, don't set minimums on them. But if you hit buy it now, today, everything in the store is 10% off. No minimums, no maximums. We'll, we'll be able to do 10% on anything if you hit the buy it now button. Awesome. All right. Well, again, go to Sports Card Investor. Click on the virtual 2020. Click over to his page. Click over to eBay. Get ready. There may be some cards you want to buy it now and take advantage of that 10% or otherwise some cards you want to put an offer on. Let's get going, Juan. Let's take a look at the cards. All righty. So we're going to start off with folks in your neck of the woods. We're going to start off with an Acuna Sepia Refractor. Nice. And another Acuna. So this is a top diamond icons, autographed, number one of five. So this is also an eBay 101, I guess, huh? There you go. Indeed. That's right. Next, we got uh, the Polar Bear Pistol P. Uh, it's an orange diffractor auto. BGS 9.5, pop one. Uh, we got this one listed up in the store now. Florida Gator. And this guy's really, yeah, man, that's a nice one. This guy's really set the market on fire, right? Uh, Bowman, Sparkle Refractor, Auto, Jason Dominguez. Got that one just the other day. Very nice. And this one you don't see too often. I think this is a pop three. So Walker Bueller, and if you see the little turkey numbered to 35, Top Holiday Edition, autographed. 
PSA 10. Next, we got Chris Bryant in his USA Team jersey, RPA, BGS 9.5 rookie. Uh, this is one of my favorites. Numbered out of 65, but it's also an eBay 101, number 65 of 65. It's a Wander Frankel Bowman Sterling Auto die cut, PSA 10. And we're going to keep the Pop 1 train rolling. Here is a Vlad Jr. Atomic Bowman's Best Refractor Auto, PSA 10. And let me tell you, the next two here, you're going to have to pry them from my dead hands because they're beautiful. Here is a gold refractor, Mickey Mantle, numbered to 50, BGS 9.5. That is nice. And it's got a piece of his jersey. I think this is game worn, I believe. And we have another refractor, Mickey Mantle, with a piece of the bat. And this one's numbered 235. This is a pop three, I believe. Very nice. And we, and we have a little something for everybody, Jeff. So here's a, a Tatis PSA 10 Tops Chrome. Not everything has to be super high end, but this is a great card, and it has a lot of upside. This one's a little bit more rare. Number to 10, it's a Panini National. Uh, Fernando Tatis, PSA 10. This is also a Pop 1. And I guess the Pop 1 train is going to continue to roll because we got a Frank Thomas Tops Archive out of 99, PSA 10. Here we got Nolan Ryan, uh, National Treasures, uh, uh, Patch Auto. And I believe this one was a Pop 5. It's an 8.5 with a 10 auto. Uh, number to five. <clears throat> and uh, well, here, here's another pop one for sure. This is uh, Nolan Ryan, four color patch auto from uh, Tops Triple Threads, uh, number two nine. Juan Soto, this kid's got nothing but potential. Refractor, PSA 10. I have a few of these already listed. Potential and a World and of Series course ring got, already. That's it, he is. And he got better from the Rona. <laughs> there you go. I, I'm sure it gave him a little boost this year. That's right. Well, here's his uh, Tops update, Tops Chrome update, actually. Nice. And now we're going to show some off of the, of the GOAT in baseball. We're running out of baseball here. But here's a 2012 Mike Trout uh, gold refractor. And this is a PSA 9. Tops Clearly Authentic Auto, number to 25. This is the case hit. This is the one that uh, they advertise. Beautiful card. And now we got triplets. So we got three Mike Trout, a PSA 9, BGS 9.5, and a PSA 10 Purple Refractor Rookie cards. Nice. And, of course, you can't talk about Trout without the iconic card, right? PSA 10. That's the one. Beautiful. That's the one. Yep. So that's what we got for baseball. We're going to move over to football now. As we segue, start off with the GOAT, Tom Brady, Pacific, PSA 9. Good way to start. Have a couple of these. Yep, here's the pair. Here's a Brady Auto, number to 100. It's a PSA 7, but this is a tough card. A lot of gold borders, a little chipping, but I, I needed to put this in a slab. 11 of 100. Now we got Drew Brees, Auto PSA 9, number to, I think this is number to 3. Definitely a pop one. Drew Brees die cut spectra, number to 10, or this is not gold, sorry, this is orange, number to 10. One of my favorite players, Larry Fitzgerald, gold X Fractor, number to 150, here's a PSA 9. And then we got the PSA 10 right here. Nice. Yeah. Here is a Leonard Fournette champ ticket, one of one, PSA 10. It's the second year, but it's a beautiful card. I think he's going to get it back uh, this year. He's going he to step he it might. up. 
Jags will be an interesting team to watch. Yep. And then, you know, we have to represent for Miami, Jeff. So Frank Gore from the U. <laughs> and the rookie ticket auto, PSA 8. This guy's cards are on fire, of course. Lamar Jackson, Optichrome, PSA 10. Look at the shine on that. It's beautiful. Yep. Josh Jacobs, RPA, number to 25. Two-color patch or three-color patch, actually. That's nice, man. I like that one. I like that one a lot. Cool. Yeah, well, if you like that one, you'll really like this one because I know how much you like select. So I this is a like pop selects. one, number to five. Daniel Jones, PSA 10. And we got a piece of the glove right here, Daniel Jones, number to 25, PSA 9. Nice. And, you know, it's really about what you like, right? It's not about how much the cards are worth. This card's not worth a whole lot, but this is one of my favorite cards. It's uh, an eBay one of one, so 25 of 25, Prime, Ray Lewis, again from the U, representing from Miami. <laughs> three break, four color patch, or three color patch. We got Drew Lock Prism, PSA 9 Auto. A guy that I think is going to turn it back on this year also, Baker Mayfield. I know his card's kind of his card price has kind of dropped down a little bit. I paid a lot for this one, could but be a good buy uh, I think there's still some Baker Mayfield right now. It really could be. Yeah, absolutely. This guy really really has a lot of potential too. DK Metcalf, Triple Relic, Auto, from NT PSA nine. And this is a prime. I believe this one's numbered to 25. Yeah, numbered to 25. Sony Michelle Select RPA Purple Prism, PSA 10. This was a pop one, but I got it graded a while ago. His cards have kind of gone down a little bit also, but still a beautiful card. Here we got uh, Contender Optic, Gardner Minshew Auto, PSA 10. Very nice. And we got about we got about three more minutes here, Juan. All right, cool. Well, let's switch over to some basketball then. Let's let's do some basketball. Let's end with basketball. Yep, Kobe second year refractor. Awesome. Tops technique, DGS nine five. And we're gonna go to Kobe rookie Bowman's best PSA nine. Beautiful, beautiful. Yep. This guy's lighting it up right now. Bull Bull. It's a PSA 9. You know, the, the, the new ones are a little bit off-centered. So it's a prism. on Silver the rise prism. for sure. Yep. And an R.J. Barrett, also a PSA 9. Bagley Auto, Dominator, PSA 10. John Morant. This is the Fast Break Auto, PSA 9. And this is a big one, number to 75, Purple Fast Break Prism, PSA 10. Very low pop on this, of course, it's number to 75. It's a beautiful card. Back to Atlanta for you, Trey Young. There we go, there's my PSA boy. PSA 10 Select. There's my boy. That's it, I know you got a lot of that. And... Some of the nice stuff here. Everybody loves this guy, huh? I don't know if he's any good. What do you think? Got a couple of them. PSA and, 9, Select, or uh, Prism. And we're about to give one of those away, thanks to Juan. I've got one here in the studio that Juan sent us that we're about to give away. That's right. And we got a PSA 10 rookie debut, NBA debut, Mosaic. All right, Juan, let's do and two or three more, and then we're going to give this Zion away. All right. Well, then look at the good ones then, all right? Two or three more. Let's go. Let's for look this. at the Jordan rookies. End with a little fire. Oh, look at that. There you go. The sticker. Nice. Right. Sticker. Another sticker. Very nice. And then three rookies. Wow. BGS 8.5. PSA 8. And then the PSA 8 with the nicest. This is the PSA 8 with the nicest centering I've ever seen. That's really good centering for an 8. Here's the other one. Yeah. 
Awesome. And all of yep, these yep. and much, much more is available on Incredible Collectibles website. Go check them out right now, or rather on eBay, I should say. Go check them out on eBay. You can also go to ebay.com slash trading cards to get right into Incredible Collectibles and all of the different dealers that are participating in the virtual Sports Card Con 2020. Juan, it's been awesome to have you on. And by the way, thank you so much for giving us this Zion. We just pulled a random viewer from the contest entries tonight. And that is Jimmy Torres 79. Jimmy Torres 79, congratulations. This is heading your way. Congratulations. Courtesy of Jimmy. Juan and Incredible boy. Collectibles. Awesome, Juan. Thank you so much for joining the virtual, man. We really appreciate it. Oh, my pleasure. Thank you for having me, Jeff. Thank you for putting this on also. It's been great. Absolutely. Take care. All right, everybody, this is the moment you have been waiting for. We are about to break a box of Spectre basketball, a, a box of Impeccable basketball, and a box of National Treasures basketball. And you, everybody watching, is going to win all of these spots. Pick your team, random spots. We're going to bring in the randomizer now, and the, we're going to hit the random button. And the first 90 that come up, the first 30 are getting Spectra. The next 30 are getting a team in Impeccable, and the last 30 are getting a team in National Treasures. And it's going to be assigned. The teams are all in alphabetical order. So let's go ahead and hit that randomizer button. This is everybody who entered the contest. Again, what you're seeing is the first part of your email address. We cut off the at symbol and what was after the at symbol. So we're taking the first 30 right now, and we're going to drop them into the Spectra. So that is the Spectra winners. Congratulations if your name is on that list and look at what team you were just put next to. Now we're going to take 31 through 60. And this is going to be for Impeccable. So again, congratulations. If you see your name there, look at what team you are being put next to. And now we're going to go grab spots 61 through 90. And that is going to be for National Treasures. So those are the names for National Treasures. These are all people who entered. This is the first part of the email addresses of those registrants. Who got the Pelicans? Who got the Pelicans? What's that name, Parker? It's a little small for me to read on my monitor. Benny Boy 1111 has the Pelicans and the National Treasure break. We are now going to go live to Layden Sports Cards. This is all brought to you by eBay. They have given us these boxes. Layden Sports Cards is going to be breaking them. We owe a huge thanks to eBay. By the way, there's another National Treasures box that's going to be given away after this. Another National. So stay tuned. Even if your name wasn't called, stay tuned. But let's now go to Layden. <laughs> They wanted uh, to do this more. order, yeah. Alrighty, guys and gals, the virtual sports con is underway. Thank you, to, thank you to everybody at Sports Card Investor uh, for making us a part of this tonight. Um, we super appreciate it here at Leighton Sports Cards, and we're having a great time tonight. Um, thanks, everybody. Good luck, everybody. Um, eBay, thank you so very much for donating these boxes to our hobby for tonight's events. Uh, we got a box of 1920 Spectra. Um, impeccable basketball and the big one national treasures basketball so we're all super excited hopefully uh, everybody gets something cool or we get a huge hit and we get to celebrate um, thank you all so very much uh, for being a part of this at the virtual uh, virtual sports convention so good luck everybody let's get right to it let's see what we got thank you eBay uh, for your incredible donation this is awesome so Good luck, everyone. Here we go. We're starting off with uh, Spectra Basketball Hobby, 1920. 
Here we go. Everybody listening out there for the uh, from the virtual sports con, make sure you guys click the subscribe button on our YouTube channel. Um, we break live seven nights a week, um, and even a couple of days a week as well. We do personal boxes, group breaks, we do giant mixers, a little bit of something for everybody. So here we go. Starting off, we got a uh, Lou Williams for the Clips. Uh, that's a nice start. Little John Morant rookie base action. Nice one, Grizzlies. And Spurs, number to 149, rookie, Jersey Auto, Kelvin Johnson, on card. Josh 71882. Josh 71882. Don't be, don't be shy, call it out yeah. so I don't have to repeat it. There you go, buddy. And we got a DeAndre Ayton parallel for Phoenix. Nicole King, 722. Wow, no. That is two of 49. Next pack. Got, he's on TV right now, Fear the Beard. Harden. Got a nice little hero rookie for the Heat. And Phoenix. Autograph, Stefan Marbury. Number to 99. There you go, Suns. Nicole King, 722. There you go, Nicole. And a Dylan Windler, rookie silver, Cleveland. Silver Windler. Look how designed. Next up. We got a Eric Bledsoe base for the Bucks. Got a Goga rookie, Indiana. And Nuggets, number to 49. Autograph, Marcus Camby. Little UMass action. Christopher Wagemans. Camby auto there. And a Jalen Noel rookie parallel, Minnesota. That is to 99. T Wolves. Big cow. So Matt's, Matt next to me is calling out who the winners were. They just did the random for these boxes, guys. They just did it right before they cut live to us. Uh, rookie Nasir Little, Blazers. Knicks. Is that a variation? Yeah. Rookie photo variation, RJ Barrett. There you go, Knicks. Nate Ruggieri. Oops. Hornets, number to 149. On-card rookie, Jersey Auto, Cody Martin with the man bun. Casey Dennis. <clears throat> oh, are you kidding me? Are you Jeez. kidding me, dude? <laughs> Woo! Look at this. Rookie gold, Zion Williamson. Boom! That's awesome. Hair MT. They just did them, Johnny. Uh, five of ten there. Good God. What a card. Woo! Five of ten, Zion. That is awesome. What a beauty. Congratulations. Big card. All right, guys. Let's do the impeccable box. Good luck, everybody. We've been calling out who's getting the the cards as they come out guys we're trying to anyway they did the randoms right before this if you re rewind the virtual sports con live feed uh if you rewind the feed you'll see all the randoms they did right before we went live we got another jaw this one is 13 of 49 metal jaw 
gas breaker. So we got a John Base out of Spectra and a John Purple out of Impeccable. All right. Beautiful Rui Hachimura rookie. That is 19 of 75. Trust and fur. Nice Rui there. We got KD, 17 of 99 for the Nets. We got Steph Curry, 30 of 49, Golden State jersey number hit on the step. Came over 12. Very nice. Redemption. That's Wizards again. Elegance rookie jersey autograph. Admiral Schofield. The Schofield. Trust and fur. Wizards. There you go. Man, that gold Zion was freaking awesome. Can't believe it. Magic. Richard Lewis on Cardado, 40 of 99, O-Town. BS WAP 2. Little hometown cooking right there. We got Lakers, Eddie Jones on card, 89 of 99. Kevin McLaughlin. <clears throat> there you go, Lakers. Celtics, Grant Williams, rookie jersey auto, 58 of 99. There you go, Boston. Jahar St. Sanye. Just lost to Milwaukee, darn it. That's my team. And Golden State, yet again. Rookie, on card auto, 92 of 99, Eric Pascal. Game over 12. There you go, Warriors. Congrats. And it's big boy time, ladies and gents. eBay, way to go, guys. You picked three awesome boxes to donate here. Um, let's get a monster out of NT. Hoping for a uh, logo man or a giant rookie patch auto. Here we go. Good luck, everyone. Thanks, everyone, for joining eBay, thank you so much. Sports card investor, thank you guys for letting us uh, be a part of this. Having a great time here, and uh, you guys are doing a great job with the uh, virtual sports convention. All good things, man. We really appreciate it. Anybody listening out there, feel free to come join our breaks anytime you want at LeightonSportsCards.com. Thanks, everyone. Here we go. Upside down card. All right, Jason Tatum, 22 of 49 Celtics. Ryan George. This guy's stuff is on fire, man. Nice Tatum. Celtics go back to back. One of one printing plate. Don Chaney from 1819 Immaculate. Ryan George. Got a timeline jersey going to the Hawks. 75 of 99 Jabari Parker. JP Cunningham 6. There you go, buddy. <clears throat> we got a patch card going to the Milwaukee Bucks. 18 of 25, Brooke Lopez. Caleb Bitt. Milwaukee Bucks go back to back. Jersey card, Eric Bledsoe to 99. K 
Caleb did. Way to go, Bucks. Back to back hits. Yeah, uh, after hours, Matt is right next to me, buddy. I'm sorry, I'm trying to watch two live chats. Hawks again, Jersey, Jeff Teague, 82 of 99. JP Cunningham. Way to go, Hawks. And Houston Rockets, Jersey Auto, 60 of 99, Tyson Chandler. DT005. With the wannabe uh, Harden beard there. There you go, guys. Next up, a little old school loving for the Knicks. 23 of 25, Auto Jerry Lucas. Hayden G. They don't sign like that anymore, man. There you go, Knickerbockers. Jerry Lucas Auto. After that, Dallas Auto. Chris Dapps Porzingis, 16 of 25, the unicorn. BRC sales. There you go, Dallas, BRC. Congrats, buddy. Last but not least, we have a horizontal RPA 37 of 75 for Golden State. Eric Pascal, very nice, with a nice patch. Ray the King. Congratulations. And that is going to do it, guys. Let's take a look at that gold Zion from the Spectra box again. Man alive. That is a thing to behold. What a beauty. What a beauty. So nice. 5 of 10. Thanks again, everyone. Thank you to uh, everyone at eBay. Thank you to Sports Card Investor. Um, I appreciate you guys watching on the live feed, also on, obviously on our live feed and on Sports Card Investor's live feed uh, for the virtual sports con. Um, thank you, everybody. I hope you had a good time. Congratulations to the winners. Um, yeah, we're going to actually... Uh, let break and Brad jump back in here and he's going to take over and start getting set up for the next couple of breaks We actually have a big if you want to hang out in our live feed. We have a big dual case coming up of uh, NT. Oh my and god and ladies and gentlemen, that was friggin amazing. That was awesome. That Zion gold spectra number to 10. Are you kidding me? We just seriously made a watcher of tonight's virtual super duper happy. Thanks to eBay. Thanks to eBay for giving us those boxes and bringing laden sports cards on. Hair MT, Hair MT, congratulations on your Zion. I hope you are running down your street right now, screaming your lungs off about that card. There were other nice ones as well. Congratulations to the winner of Jaw. Uh, out of 49 from the Impeccable box, J.S. Ricker. Guys, all of these cards have been given away for free to people who watch the virtual. It's all thanks to eBay. And thank you, Layden Sports Cards, for doing that break. And by the way, Layden Sports Cards, amazing breakers, some of the best in the business, and they have a special coupon code offer, code LSC10, Layden Sports Cards, LSC10. If you use that at checkout for Layden, you get 10% off any pick your team style break on Layden Sports Cards websites. Okay, guys, this is very important. We are about to give away another box of National Treasures basketball. And this time, the complete box is being given away. And here is how it's going to be given away. This is extremely important. It's going to be given away on eBay's Instagram. You have to go to Instagram right now on your phone or on your computer and in a couple of minutes, we're going to go live on eBay's Instagram. And the person who's going to win is somebody who is commenting within the eBay Instagram. You have a chance of winning a complete unopened box of National Treasures basketball plus other prizes. I mean, guys, guys, you can win an unopened box, but you've got to go to eBay's Instagram. They are at eBay on Instagram. Go there right now and please come back tomorrow night at 8 p.m. 
to this YouTube channel for another special night of the virtual with Dr. James Beckett joining the virtual and more great dealers and giveaways. All right, guys, hang up right now. Go to eBay's Instagram.